This is your weekly IEP TV News Bulletin. My name is Trent Gross. Governor Wolf decided that Friday, June 19th, as June, Juneteenth National Freedom Day. This will be the first anniversary of Pennsylvania declaring June 19th as Juneteenth National Freedom Day. For many people, this celebration has significance in commemorating the end of slavery in the United States. Our reporter, Kayron Bird, has a story. Juneteenth is a holiday that originated in Texas that is commemorating the end of slavery in the United States on June 19, 1865. Juneteenth is a combination between June and the 19th. On this day in 1865, two years later after the slaves were emancipated, slaves in Galveston, Texas finally got the news that they were free. The holiday serves as an opportunity to cherish freedom and to also acknowledge the history of slavery in our country. Following other states' decisions, as of recently stated by Governor Tom Wolf. Juneteenth will become an official holiday in Pennsylvania. This year, a few major companies are recognizing Juneteenth as a holiday, like Target, Nike, and Google. The festival was here at the Malcolm X Park on 5100 Pine Street. The festival had many ways for people to celebrate with each other, by people giving meaningful speeches, dance performances, and rapping on stage. Angela Davis tells us that freedom is a constant struggle. few vendors selling food and Black Lives Matter merch. Kids also got the chance to ride horses around the park. <laughs> Even silent protesters for the Black Lives Matter movement came to the park to show their support for Juneteenth. <laughs> It's nice to finally see Juneteenth being recognized as an official holiday. It's definitely a push in the right direction for equality. This is Karan Thomas reporting for IUP TV News. With situations moving into phase two, other sports are also making a comeback. This time, it's the National Hockey League. After being suspended to COVID-19, the NHL is currently preparing a postseason and will decide soon on the two hub cities that will host all of the games. Ryan Malone has a story. The NHL announced via Skype call that the league will be returning with a 2014 format to resume the 1920 NHL season, meaning that seven teams will not be returning to play. Commissioner Gary Bettman explained how there will be two different hub cities where the remaining 24 teams will be sent to finish a qualifying tournament, followed by the actual NHL 2020 playoffs, which will be played in just one of the hub cities. This call was made by the higher ups in the NHL totem pole, but also included some of the best players in the world like Sidney Crosby and Connor McDavid, who seem to be excited to start the season back up. However, with all the health risks involved, many people remain on the fence about returning to play. I met up with NHL fan Alex Christopher to ask him about the fans' perspective of returning to play. I believe that the leagues are making the right call regarding different phases that the teams and players have to go through and by when they do return not having fans right away it's more about the player's safety and the fan safety versus getting sports back as fast as they can like alex said sports coming back is not the issue the health and safety of players fans and coaching staffs are the biggest issue with returning sports. And that's why we all have to be hopeful that these sports can return with no issues. For IUP TV News, my name is Ryan Malone. More prominent figures are commenting on the recent political situation. This time is from NBA player Kyrie Irving. Here's a story. NBA player Kyrie Irving is urging players to sit out the NBA's restart plan. Kyrie Irving is a six-time All-Star and two-time member of the All-NBA team and has won an NBA championship in 2016 with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Kyrie Irving now plays with the Brooklyn Nets and is also the vice president of the National Basketball Players Association. Kyrie Irving led a call of NBA and WNBA players questioning and urging players to sit out the remainder of the 2020 season in order to press for racial reform and racial injustice. 
As you may know, during these precedented times, protests for Black Lives Matter and racial equality is at an all-time high, with momentum in favor of African-American activists. Yeah, how do you feel about Kyrie Irving sitting out the main WC? Well, I think Kyrie Irving choosing to sit out and protest uh, to the police brutality and the issues uh, that black Americans are facing today, I think it sends a, b- a big message. It, it says that um, he's serious and the, si- and the situation is serious and that there's nothing bigger than that right now. Although many fans and players support Kyrie Irving and his statement, some players aren't sure if this is the right way to go about this. Former NBA player Matt Barnes stated that sitting without a cause or a purpose defeats the purpose and also divides us. Now is the time, although, you know, we we wore the T-shirts and we've dead, said stuff and done stuff and the NBA has scratched the surface as far as being in the communities. But I think what, you know, what Steve and I are talking about with these demands that these players are going to be making to these owners, it's, it's a significant difference. It's not just PR, pictures, we're here, we, we support Black Lives Matter. This is, you know, creating funds that are be able to be able to go to the, you know, to the programs in the community. This is really doing things that are going to really root deep into the communities. But as far as taking distraction away from the movement, I think it's only going to bring more attention because the whole entire world is going to be watching every move that the NBA makes. How will the league respond? Will this help create the change that we need? This is Marvin June reporting for IUP TV News. If you're a big fan of video games, the options might be endless. During this pandemic time, gamers use this time not only to play the video games alone, but to also continue interacting with others across the globe. I talked to a few gamers on how COVID-19 affected the availability of some games. What was once viewed by some as a waste of time has now become a favorite hobby for others. Video games are allowing people to interact with others while maintaining a safe distance. Because they provide a platform to talk and connect with each other, like all of us together when we can't see each other in person. For example, consoles like the Xbox and PlayStation have party functions and you can talk to your friends over headset over various different games that you play. A new record was set in April 2020 when $1.5 billion was spent on gaming hardware, software, accessories, and more. Nintendo has reported a worldwide shortage of Switch consoles due to a high demand and inability to pump out more because of the ongoing COVID-19. Finding a Switch was very difficult, especially since we've been in this quarantine for the COVID. I was checking online stores constantly and in, and in store as well. They were always sold out. And if there was one online, it was always way overpriced and not worth, not worth it. System sellers, including Animal Crossing, Pokemon, and Super Smash Bros. are causing high demand and little chance of finding one outside of a third-party retailer. On the other hand, Microsoft and Sony are gearing up for the next generation of consoles. Microsoft announced the Xbox Series X with a focus on hardware, while Sony put an emphasis on their intellectual properties with the release of the PS5. Regardless of what console you prefer, this is an exciting time as we enter the next generation of gaming consoles, allowing people to interact at a safe distance. This has been Trent Gross with IUP TV. That's all the news for this week. This is Trent Gross. Don't forget to check out our Instagram page. See you next week.